Thanks so much. Good morning, everyone. Hema Reddy here, and I know we've got a tight 45-minute slot, and I'm going to kick off uh, with the first with the baton, so i got to make sure I stay on top of things. So a couple housekeeping things. Um, I will be taking questions, but keep in mind I'll try to save them till the end, time permitting, and I have a lot I want to get through uh, with you today. I have a signal that, as I mentioned to uh, my subscribers and readers, I first released on Black Friday, and I already have examples from people who've used it and found it effective. So I want to make sure I teach it to you and let you know how you can learn more. So before we dig into all the fun stuff, uh, trading is obviously risky business, and it's very important for you to evaluate any information, opinion, advice, or other content contained in this presentation. So if you haven't figured it out already, I speak quickly. I'm a New Yorker. And I teach at a pretty fast clip. So um, I saw somebody write in the room, you know, your pen and paper is your note uh, app on your computer. That's fine. Whatever you need, just be ready to take some notes. If you ask a question and I don't get to it, you can always paste it back in the room later. But first, for anyone who's new to me or my work, I want to make sure you know where I'm coming from with this and therefore give you reasons to ground and listen to me, if not all the other great speakers uh, this afternoon. So. This is me, Hema Reddy. I've been studying the markets for over 16 years now, and I was first introduced to them by my late father when I was a teenager. Well, my dad was a doctor, but he traded heavily in his retirement accounts. So I was super inspired by what I learned, and I decided to leave my home state of New York to study finance at Indiana University. I studied hard, I graduated on time, but when it came to learning about the markets and trading and investing, I learned next to nothing. So my dad and I struck a deal. He said, you can move home, and work part-time and I'll teach you about the markets. So the first assignment he gave me was to read this book called How to Make Profits Trading in Commodities, which was written by W.D. Gann. Now, Gann was a writer and trader back in the early 1900s, but because human nature doesn't change, um, the rules and tenets that he put out there still applied and my dad found them to be useful. That's why he started me off with his work. Now, a book is great and all, but you need price action to analyze. So my dad also set me up with TradeStation software. And he specifically had me set up this chart of a one minute bar chart, no candles. He didn't want me to get confused of the E-mini S&P 500. And he gave me an assignment and he said, I want you to watch this chart for three hours a day. It doesn't have to be the first three hours, any mix of three hours of trading action during the regular session for an entire month before I'm gonna start answering your questions about how to trade and invest. So as you can imagine, as a recent college grad, this was a little intimidating, but I said, all right, it's my dad's assignment. I guess I have no choice but to do it. So I started watching the market and reading the book. And sure enough, after a couple of weeks, it didn't take very long, I started to observe buy and sell signals on this little one minute chart the way that Gann was talking about in you know, commodity markets on a year to year basis. So I started to put two and two together and also take what I was learning from Gann's book and convert it into graphic images like these. I wanted to take the concepts that he was describing in words and have references for them that I could visualize. So I'd print them out, put them near my trading desk and continue my studies. Now, as I got more and more involved with the work and my father gave me more instruction and more resources, I started to take the ES approach to a new level. And I was on my own writing my own research in the evenings ahead of the next trading day. So I started to share them with my dad and he actually um, received them by email from me every day. I, I just put this all on him. He didn't ask for it. But what I did was I called it the skinny on the mini because the skinny, you know, in American slang is the lowdown or the key points or the highlights. And I wanted this to be something that would prep me for my next session of trading and analyzing. And I started sending to my dad, as you can see, this first uh, batch year, one of the early ones was 2005. Now, I continued to send these to my father. He actually used them in his trading and liked them and kept asking them for uh, more of them because they were benefiting his work. But all along, I really wanted to be an analyst, not so much a trader. So I continued to study the ES and technical analysis, but I got my CMT designation. This stands for Chartered Market Technician. And after working in Wall Street for a few years, I actually got a chance to write my own book about Gann's work. It's a primer that kind of leads a new trader 
uh, into the first steps of how to get into GAN's complex materials. So my book picture here, The Trading Methodologies of WD GAN, published in October 2012. Now, all this time, my father had been getting my skinny on the mini, using it to improve his trades, and that's great and all, but you know, he was my dad. So the real test of my research and analysis outside of the Wall Street uh, realm was when I started sharing the skinny on the mini with my book readers, with my webinar and lecture attendees like you guys, and with my fellow technical analysis colleagues who were actually trading out on Wall Street. I continued this for some time until my husband and I actually moved out to Minnesota. Now, my husband, this guy pictured here, is from Wisconsin. So you can see uh, he's got Midwestern roots, and he was very successful in converting me into a T-shirt wearing, bratwurst eating, Green Bay Packers football fan. That's American football for anyone who might be confused. So given this change of events in our life, and not only my husband's job in Minnesota that moved us out there, but a new job that I got in equity research at an investment bank, you put the two and two together, it doesn't leave much room for me to write the skinny and the mini, so I had to shelve it. And when I did, I had to go back to a bunch of people who'd been getting it for a long time and say, hey, I can't share this independent research anymore, at least for the time being. And then they were all super sad and telling me how they too were using my support and resistance, uh, timing windows, et cetera, to improve their trading of the ES as well as other markets, because they were taking that education and applying it elsewhere. So I knew I'd have to bring back the skinny and the mini for good. I just didn't know when. But sure enough, my husband and I actually moved back to New York, my home state, for his job up in Buffalo, New York. That's where we are now. And I brought back the skinny on the mini after leaving the sell side. And I said, okay, guys, so all of you who've been getting it for all these years for free, I'm going to offer this to you as a monthly subscription. And a lot of them started happily paying me for it. They were still actively trading the e-mini. They still wanted the information. So think about it. People started paying for something they used to get for free. That's how valuable it was to them. And what leads me to presenting in front of you all today is that not only did they want my research and information to them every day, they wanted to learn how I was doing this. And they knew my story, which you now know, about how I had to take a lot of this at a young age and make it my own. So they absolutely begged me to really, really teach more and share concepts of what I've been using all these years. So here we are, all right? So this hopefully keeps you sticking around longer to listen to me and again, staying around for the whole day. But today's agenda, now that you know where I'm coming from and what I've got to offer you, starts with an indicator called RSI power zones. I came across this concept in my CMT studies, but I twisted it around a little bit to make it my own. And um, that's an indicator on every one of my charts, as you'll see. We're gonna talk about mean reversion because I said in the title of this presentation, more than mean reversion, okay? RSI, which is a momentum indicator, is more than just about calling market tops and bottoms. So I want to make sure we all understand what mean reversion is. And then we're going to go beyond mean reversion and we're going to look at this RSI power zones entry signal that I have clear cut rules for. We'll go through examples I've got in a PowerPoint so we can walk through them all together and um, a couple of live charts to signals I've noticed recently that have occurred since I put this information out on Black Friday. So obviously talked about how my husband got me to be a Green Bay Packers football fan and six plus years of marriage in, I'm at the point now where I can use football as an analogy to teach tactical analysis. So I'm gonna do that. So we're gonna put the football field out here. For those of you who aren't familiar with American football, the playing zone is zero to 100 yards. And then there's these two end zones and any team, so this represents Green Bay Packers, and you could say, well, actually, let me ask you guys, what would you say is biggest uh, longtime opponent of the Packers? Or at least one of them. They've got quite a few. So yeah, we're all talking about the Midwest teams, but I would agree with uh, Wesley and with Dennis, or with Bill and with Wesley here that it's the Bears. So the Chicago Bears, I would say, are their biggest longtime rival, and that's my husband's answer if you ask him. So I also specifically picked the Bears for another reason, which you'll see in a few slides. Now, the Packers have to move through the Bears' defense in order to get to their end zone and score points. You don't score points in the middle of the field in football. You got to get the ball through the end zone in some fashion, whether it's a touchdown or kicking it through the poles, a field goal. And the Bears have the same objective, right? They've got to get through the uh, Packers' defense and get to their end zone. 
So let's take this concept and let's take this football field and turn it on its head. And we're going to drop it down onto an, an, a stock chart. It could be anything. Now, of course, the E-mini is clearly my baby, if you will. So this is just a segment of ES history. The way I have my charts labeled so that you guys can follow along with any chart that I have is as follows. Okay? I have the contract or the uh, stock or whatever the security is listed first. I have the type of chart. This happens to be continuous contract chart instead of specific contract. I have the time frame, meaning what does each bar on the chart stand for? And then I have the period of time the chart is covering. Okay. So every one of my PowerPoint charts is like this. So anytime you're looking at this and you maybe are lost in what we're analyzing, just look up at that top line. Now, if you look at the ind uh, indicator on the bottom of this chart, you may recognize it if you haven't already here with a little name there as the RSI, which is bound between zero, zero and 100, okay? So I've kind of cheated squeezing the end zones in to the 100, but the concept still applies. Now, the one thing we're not going to change from the traditional RSI that Mr. Wells Wilder put out to the world in oh, 1978 is the standard 14 period setting, okay? It's very important in your notes, whether you're on paper, pen, sticky note app, whatever, to make sure that you don't mess with the settings. Down the road, if you get experience enough with the indicator, you may want to speed this indicator up by cutting it down to seven or slow it down by increasing it to 28, but stick to 14 periods, okay? There's important reasons behind that. And the main one being that it's tied to the lunar cycle. So whether you actively involve astrology in your trading or not, doesn't matter. Your indicators have a 14 period setting. That's usually the reason. So keep the 14 period setting and let's just quickly make sure we know what the traditional approach to the RSI is before I show you the new one. Traditionally, RSI is overbought at 70 and you have cell signals living up there like these pink uh, um, dots show. And oversold is at 30 and you have buy signals living there. So the problem though is that when you um, use only those parameters, you really limit your use of this indicator. So when it comes to using only the standard overbought on oversold, I want you to throw that out the window and just call BS on OBOS, all right? Take the bears, and let me erase this little highlighter here. Remember the bears, okay, I picked them for this reason. So the bears on this football field are like the market bears, okay? The market bears push deep down into territory to score points as bears, right? So the market bears, when it comes to the RSI, essentially live between these two zones. One is resistance, one is support. The bear resistance, as I call it, is power zone, is 55 to 65, okay? Not 70, 55 to 65. The bear support power zone is 20 to 30. And in a bear market or downtrending market or a weakening market, the RSI is generally moving between these two zones, okay? So you're going to see these numbers repeated on the charts, but make sure you jot them down quick. Bear resistance power zone, 55 to 65. Bear support power zone, 20 to 30. Now the market bulls have their own zones. As you might imagine, they're able to live in the upper realms of the RSI. So they don't necessarily find support down at 30. They find support between 40 and 50. And they find resistance between 80 and 90, okay? So this covers the topic of what is an RSI power zone and what are these uh, specific parameters, okay? And now we're going to learn a trading signal around this. And trust me, in the examples that I show you in the charts, you'll see the movement unfold. RSI 14 period, yes, TJ, we are not changing the 14 period setting, that stays the same. So as you can see in my little graphic here, because we're gonna talk now and make sure everyone understands what mean reversion is, we are not messing with 14 period, we're just changing the overbought, oversold parameters, we were keeping a 14 period RSI, okay? Cannot underline that enough. So let's take a look at price versus RSI action. Just some simulation, okay? If price does this type of price action, then RSI generally does something like this, right? RSI, which is momentum, which is um, the force behind price movement, generally moves with price. Now, mean reversion, all that means is an, a return to the average price. So can any of you name an indicator that people plot on their price chart to help them figure out what the average price is? I'll give you a clue. The word average is in the name of the indicator. 
it's really common out there. People talk about the 200 version or the 50 version, death cross, golden cross, all right, moving averages. So a moving average takes a certain number of past prices and then sums them up and divides by that number of prices. And then it keeps rolling forward. So it's always a reflection of the more recent price action. So the way that we as uh, traders, investors, chartists, whatever you call yourself, when you're looking at price, the easiest way to determine what mean reversion would be, or one of the easiest ways, is put a moving average on the chart. So let's look at a segment of price history of Apple, all right, where we have a 50-day simple moving average. All this means is that we're not weighting the prices, we're not doing anything fancy. We're simply adding up the fast past 50-day closing prices, then dividing that number by 50 and plotting it on the chart. So each day, the first number drops off and you add a new number into the calculation. Now, just keep an eye on general price action here and I'm gonna bring in this RSI power zones and the trading signals. As you can see in these incidences here, the RSI is just working off overbought conditions every time mean reversion is happening, all right? So let me use a little pen here to guide us. So we had a rally up in price in Apple and then a sharp correction lower. But during that time, all the RSI did was go from the bear resistance power zone, the two red lines, to the bear support power zone. Same thing here between uh, April and July in this chart, okay? We had a choppy correction lower, and we did have a mean reversion. We came back to the moving average. Well, all we did was go from the bull resistance power zone to the bear support power zone, okay? It was a choppier correction, so it actually moved from 80 down to 30, quite a range. And then same thing with this correction out here. We just went from the bear resistance to the bear support. So my point is that while mean reversion is uh, important to consider, even though um, momentum trading is all about, with the traditional approach, looking at the oversold versus overbought, we can actually get past just thinking about mean reversion and trade certain signals for the continuation of the trend, okay? So let's look at an example of that. Oh. So this slide about bridging the gap is just saying, don't look only at momentum to trade divergences or moves from highs to lows, use it to trade in the direction of the newly formed trend. And here is the signal. The price uptrend has to be in place for what's called an RSI trend line buy. So you need a series of higher highs and higher lows in price. Okay, that's step number one, guys. This is an important slide, so make sure you either screenshot it at the end or write down the rules. I'm giving you the signal. There's no fancy hocus pocus. This whole slide explains it, and then we're going to go through examples. The next thing to consider is that you are able to identify an RSI trend line, excuse me, a rising trend line, okay? So it's sloping up and to the right, joining RSI lows. And the important part is that the second higher low, again, on the RSI, is forming in what we call the bull support power zone, which was 40 to 50, the two lower green lines. If you are able to draw a trend line and it's rising, but the second low is not in the bull support zone, then you stop identifying the signal and you do something else. But if you're able to do one and two here, then number three is that you watch for the third touch of the RSI trend line. That is your buy signal, okay? So that buy signal happens on the third touch of the trend line. Now, in traditional price trend lines, the third touch of a trend line confirms the trend line. You don't really trade around it before that. I understand that. We're talking about a trend line on the RSI, and we're talking about taking action upon it before technically it's confirmed. So here's what all of this is going to look like. But remember, this is just an RSI momentum setup. You want to make sure that price action is confirming whatever this RSI signal is telling you. So if you get a third touch of the trend line and it holds the trend line and uh, RSI turns higher, make sure price is also turning higher before you go long or take advantage of the long trade. So I'll give you a second here to screenshot this because it's important. And because of time constraints, what we're going to do is focus on the buy example because the sell would be exactly the same. And then if I get uh, time before my time's up, we'll look at the sell. But I'll definitely show you the slide of the sell rules. It's the exact same thing, but on the opposite side.
So everybody got your screenshot? Please type S for screenshot if you're ready to see some examples here. Okay, cool. So this is the example based on that same price action I showed you for Apple for mean reversion, okay? And then we're gonna jump over to uh, my live charts with a couple of recent examples that we're just gonna draw out. So I do this very step-by-step -step approach whenever I teach a trading signal where there's plenty of price action on here, okay? I didn't like erase history, but I covered it all up so that we can reveal price action as we go and you can understand the signal better instead of being caught up with what's going on on the right side of the screen. So the first thing that's happening, and I'll use highlighting to keep us all focused here, is that we've got price rising out of the bear support power zone. Okay, it's just, it's just an observation. It's nothing uh, to say the signal has formed yet, but that's just what's going on. Then we have a price uptrend forming. How do we know we have a price uptrend forming? Well, keep your eyes towards the bottom left price section here, okay? See that little black horizontal line that you're in? Well, that was the crossing of a previous lower top. That's a classic GAN warning sign that the trend might be turning up. So when price went above the most recent lower swing high, that was the first clue that the trend might be changing the upside. The second clue, which really gave us confidence, is that we had another low form, but it was higher than the low of the previous move, okay? So we had lows coming down, this downtrend, we had a break, and then we have highs, okay? So this, this little curvature here suggests that an uptrend is forming. So if an uptrend is forming, that is number one in our rule sheet, right? We have to have a price uptrend, either in place or forming. So number two is that when it emerges, we identify rising trend line, and we join the two lows that we see. The important thing again, guys, the second low has to be in the bull support power zone. So 40 to 50 is these two green lines. That's the bull support power zone. And you can see that the second low in the RSI is there. The location of the first low is not important. It could have been down here. It could have been a little bit higher. But the second low has to be in the bull support power zone. Okay, I'm going to change to a pen because I think that might work better when I mark things. All right. So we've got one. We've got two. Step three. Again, we don't know if the setup's gonna happen, but we're gonna watch for it. Third touch of this line becomes a buy setup, and we use price to confirm. So here, on this third arrow here, we did get the buy setup, where our side came, held the support trend line, and started turning higher. And we can see that RSI uh, was confirmed by price because we had this bar right here that actually did start to confirm a higher low in price, right? All of that unfolded, and what happened? Price clearly gave us a nice up move, if you're talking about like a swing trade here. And all this time, while price up, uh, prices extended higher, all the RSI did was go deeper and deeper and further out into the bull resistance power zone, okay? This is the value of the power zones as opposed to just limiting yourself to the traditional approach. It keeps you from trying to pick a top in a market. I mean, in this current phase that we're in with the market action, who, who watches CNBC and can get away with one day of a person not calling a major top? I mean, it's just, it's impossible. It's human nature, okay? We see this thing going straight up and we want to figure out when it's gonna stop. That's usually a sign of somebody who wasn't long with it. So keep that in mind when somebody's talking about this being a bubble and it's gonna fall out of bed anytime soon. So here's one setup that shows you this. Now let's go to a short-term chart and then I'm gonna show you some live examples that I've got. So here's a chart of the ESZ, so December contract from 2017. That was the front month when I wrote my skinny and the mini report on Monday, October 20th, okay? So this was the 60-minute chart, which is what I usually plot. And you can see that we had the RSI rising out of the bear support power zone. Price uptrend formed. This is similar to the uh, example I showed you in Apple, where you had price putting in higher highs, higher lows. Now in this situation, it hadn't broken above a recent lower top. So it's not quite as bullish, it's not quite as powerful of a GAN signal, but it was still important because look at what the RSI was doing. Before I move on to the symbol here, 
look at what the RSI was doing. It was moving up out of the 40 to 50 support zone. Okay, so it's already showing some strength. Now, once you had price uptrend forming, number two step is to go and see if you can identify a bull, a rising trend line on the RSI. So we had that unfold. Now I understand that the low in between these two lows that are connected was left out. Well, that's how RSI and momentum action can be. I never said that the second low has to be the second low, higher low. I didn't say that, okay? You can connect to any low that forms so long as the second low is forming in the bull support power zone. That's the most important part. The third touch of the line, which we saw evolve later, becomes the buy setup and use price to confirm. So we had a big giant, so this gray vertical line marks uh, the time I published that day. But if you look at this last bar, clearly that confirmed that this was going to be at least a short-term higher low. And this is the third touch, guys, right here, okay? Now, you might be asking me, how come you didn't use this right here as the third touch? Or this? Very good question. Well, mostly because price hadn't made a new high. And even here, RSI was still below its most recent high and it was in the bear resistance power zone. So there was no uh, solid evidence that this was going to push higher. After all of that unfolded, after we broke this high, this blue vertical uh, horizontal line, came back and got the third touch, that was a much more powerful signal. And if you follow uh, something like that, then you can see that there was a, a burst higher and that entire move, for those of you who aren't familiar with ES trading, is equivalent to a $875 move. So obviously very nice and tradable and gave a great opportunity. So I want to jump to live charts for a second and show you some recent examples I've seen where now that I think you guys got the concept and you got the how to identify this, you can look at them on charts and see how they unfold. So this is oil and in oil, I was just glancing back at this and let's all follow along together. Okay. So I have the line drawn here, but let's take it off and pretend it's pretend you didn't see it. So this is a continuous contract chart of crude oil. Okay. So the June 21st low in 2017 happened in the bear support power zone. Okay. That sounds a lot like the other examples that we just meant, uh, just saw. We had a move higher in price. It had, was choppy along the way, but all of this was still staying below this key resistance, okay? So I would be very, very, very careful about trying to uh, do more than short-term trade this upside because a lot of it um, could still be limited to the most recent high on the daily chart, May 25th. But when you look at the low that formed on August, 31st. Okay, so now let's just draw a little line there so you guys can follow it along and I'll make it a thicker uh, color to see. I'm going to show you the trend line that you would have been able to draw as well. So you would have been looking at the RSI and here it is. Okay, it's a living, breathing thing. I'm expanding it, I'm squishing it, etc. And the trend line that could have given you big clues about what was coming in the long term picture was this, and this fits the second rule, or fits the second point of the rule where the second low has to be in the bull support power zone. From there, price traded higher. Now it was still below the 53.59 high, but when it pulled back on October 6th, look at how it came to this trend line, and it just blipped below for a day or two, and held, actually, it came down below for one day on October 6th, which was the low of the price bar and then rally back higher, okay? So this our, uh, yellow line now was the third touch of the trend line, and that would have confirmed an RSI trend line buy. And again, you know, this is a longer term play, especially for oil, some of you may day trade it, not sure how many are investing on it, but because of so many funds and stock movement, other things tied to oil, I would think that it would have been helpful to know that, hey, oil setting up to go higher, maybe I should keep an eye on it. And I think we can all agree that would have been a pretty nice play. Now, look too at the run-up that it had before anything 
kind of shook out of place, okay? It ran up, I'm just moving the yellow line along to kind of keep us on the same focus with the RSI going to the bull resistance power zone, okay? So please type a Y in the room. If it's starting to come together for you about how this signal works and how you identify it, right? Because I've got 15 minutes left. I do have a couple more I want to show you, and I want to then address some questions about how kind of you take this to, to the full level, all right? So another example I have on the live chart is from uh, NASDAQ. So uh, NASDAQ, like I said, is my baby, but I guess you could say that um, uh, E-mini is my baby, but NASDAQ, I guess, is sort of now my adopted second child because I had so many people asking me while I was writing this ES research all this uh, time, when are you gonna start doing other futures? Because it's, you know, something I just know really well, the ES market, but I started providing uh, twice a week mini NASDAQ analysis and there's full range of supports, resistance, all that. So uh, yes, it does work on minute charts, TJ. We'll go into an example of intraday soon. So on the NASDAQ, okay, you can see I have the line drawn already and I'll keep it in the name of uh, saving time here. You can see that if you anchor back to the November, excuse me, September 25th low on the RSI, okay, there was a lot of pricing action that happened after that, but then it, when it corrected and came back to the bull support power zone on November, excuse me, December 4th, it made its low. This is when you could draw the trend line, was December 4th, okay? So again, keep following my yellow highlighter bar because that's kind of keeping us to where we're watching this all unfold. We had another rally, we had a correction, and on multiple fronts, this was very useful to observe. On December 29th, we had the fourth touch of this blue trend line that also started on September 25th, it joins October 25th. So price held support, RSI held support, and uh, for those of you who've heard my recent presentations on this, um, December 29th was a timing point, like a time for key market action that I was looking for, and I didn't highlight it very strongly because it was such a choppy holiday trading week, but um, I did get very confident that we were gonna have another leg higher and return to this upper channel projection after I saw this low form. So I came in at the start of the year really uh, bullish, at least in the short term, okay? I'm, I'm, I write research mostly for day traders or people looking to trade a few hours a day in the ES and NQ, so that's obviously where my focus is, but I also do a lot of long-term analysis as well. All right, so these are two, like I said, live chart examples. And before we go to some others, let me make sure that we all are um, on the same page here. So for one second, I'm gonna go back to the signal screen, okay? And let you all take one last look at the rules and grab a screenshot or whatnot. And then I'm gonna zip to a bunch of the later slides. So please type R for rules in the room if you've got your screenshot or have written them down and you've got the rules of this signal down. Yes, this works with Forex, Maurice. It works on any market in any time frame. Like I said to TJ, I have an intraday example, but I'm gonna to get to that in a little bit. Okay, so you all have your rules. I need to see some more R's to make sure, okay? Because I'm not going to go back to this necessarily. All right. So if you don't want to uh, get a seizure from me sipping through, just blink your eyes or look away for a second. But we're going to go through the slides we just went through. I'm going to skip through to the cell signal rules. Oh, actually, before I do that, let me show you an example that, as you can tell by the formatting on this chart, this is not a chart that I made. One of my subscribers who's been using my work for over a year, but has pretty much taken in every new research education I've given out. He started using this as soon as I introduced it in November. And he sent me this chart and said, last week, okay, January 3rd, guys, on the five minute ES chart, he identified this trend line on the RSI. It fit the rules. The second low was holding the bull support power zone. The third low, the third touch came before price broke out to the upside. So what that did was he told me it got him ready. And you can see based on the time of day, this was right into the market open. And he was able to trade this entire move higher. He was long for all these subtle bars that you see here, but clearly that was 
a move from about 2699 to 2706. So that's seven points. So it's 350 bucks. That's just on one contract, guys. This is the power of this move, especially in a short term time frame. Okay, so this was me showing you now. It's just been out in the world for a few months, but this is just one of the examples that I had somebody send me to show me, hey, thanks for teaching me this. This is how I was able to use it to make money today. So let me show you the screen for the sell rules, okay? And time permitting, we'll go to them, but I need to uh, let you know some other information before that. So um, type... Uh, um, P for picture, if you've got a picture of the cell rules or you got the rules down, okay? I'll explain them really briefly. Everything is opposite, okay? And instead of a price uptrend, you have a price downtrend. Instead of a rising trend line on the RSI, you have a falling trend line on the RSI. <coughs> instead of the second higher low forming in the bull support power zone, here you have a second lower high forming in the bear resistance zone, 55 to 65. And then obviously, the third touch is not a buy signal, it's a sell signal. Okay, it's pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna zip through, again, time permitting, we'll come back to this, but I just wanna make sure, because I think there's a, two important points I need to make about trading the signal, and then I'm gonna address some questions you might be having already. We are not concerned about the trend line staying intact long after getting the third touch signal, okay? Trend lines on momentum indicators, in my experience, get whipped around um, like crazy, but that doesn't take away their usefulness and effectiveness on that third touch, okay? So even though on price, I usually advise to kind of hold on to trend lines and keep them there until they're no good, these trend lines, after you get the third touch, don't be married to it, take it off your screen, move on, especially if you're trading short term. Now, fourth or fifth touch signals may occur, but we are focusing on the third touch only. Don't take what I showed you today and say, hey, he might traded a fourth touch and it was a winning trade, or I traded a fourth touch and I was losing trade because that won't matter to me. I'm not teaching you to trade the fourth or fifth touch. I'm treating you to trade, teaching you to trade this on the third touch, okay? This system, does it work on stocks, ETFs, currencies, or only with, this works as well in any active market in any time frame. I'm limited to how many examples I can show you, but give me a moment here and you'll understand more. So these are some questions you guys probably have right off the bat after seeing this basic information. How do you determine where to place protective stops? I mean, entry is great, but where do you put your stop? What about trailing your stop, right? What about moving it, depending on how the trade's unfolding? Are there other entry signals that you can trade off RSI power zones? And then how do you put this all together from the first steps of making a trade to the last? Well, for that, I have my RSI top, sorry, top trading strategies using RSI power zones course. So what does this course include? Well, it covers how to incorporate RSI power zones into all eight phases of the trading process. I personally break trading into eight phases because I was inspired by GAN eights, okay? It covers everything from trend assessment and signal observation, that's phases one and two, to trade exit and review. Those are phases seven and eight and everything in between. I give you specific setups that are adjustable based to, on your risk tolerance. The entry and the stop, it's very, very specific and refined. For those of you who took my RSI Power Zones workshop, which was a different course, this course is also introductory. It's completely independent of it, but it answers the questions people are asking me ever since I introduced RSI Power Zones about, well, how do you trade it specifically? Now, I have a takeaway tool, it's a cheat sheet. It's a PDF file that goes with this education so that you can have um, on your desk, I, you may hear papers waving, okay? I did that on purpose to show you that that is my cheat sheet from this course in front of my own desk. Remember I made those index card size graphics? Well, these are eight and a half by 11 tables, graphics, diagrams that help you quickly refer to the material in the course. It's 2.5 hours of material already on demand as, as a course video, but it's broken down into chapters. And because I don't wanna just give you an on-demand course and say, good luck, see ya, I do a live bonus session. And so for this particular run of this course, the live bonus session would be Thursday, February 8th at 4.30 p.m. I'll take your q and I'll take your live tickers requests, but the key is that even if you can't make it live that day, if you sign up for this course, you get access to the bonus session. It gets recorded and placed in your portal. 
Now, in addition to the actual course material and the cheat sheets and the bonus session, I wanna make sure you really get familiar with using RSI Power Zones. So I give you examples of them daily. This means you get 30 days of full access to the Skinny on the Mini membership. So there's RSI Power Zones on every chart. You get daily analysis of the E-mini S&P. And then, like I said, recently added a Monday and Wednesday analysis of the mini NASDAQ. So what is this uh, expand or uh, what is the span of this? It starts right when you sign up. So you would have instant access to the portal today for today's um, skinny on the mini report on the ES because it's Tuesday. So there's a one report and it would continue. You would get them emailed to your inbox on through February 8th which is the same day that we have the bonus session in the afternoon. So this is what a skinny in the mini looks like if it's new to any of you, okay? You've got the chart, which you saw in one of my examples, usually is a 60 minute chart, but the details of the chart are always listed right below. Now, something I do every single day is I take accountability for what I'm putting out in the world. And so I list my prior commentary with quotes, with brackets, like literally my own words, what did I say last time? And there's a vertical line that marks when I wrote that. So you can see what happened in the market and how useful my information was. So I move on from the prior commentary to the recap of market activity. It can be a little short, long, depends on what's going on. And then I talk about the outlook. The outlook shows what I suspect for the day ahead. Again, the length will vary. Finally, last but not least though, I have resistance levels and support levels. And I also have trend line descriptions. Now the trend lines are generally on my daily chart, which I don't show day to day because I'm trying to uh, keep you focused on the pulse and the 60 minute really shows the pulse. But any trend line that I have that I'm using my analysis, I will label here and depict for you and you'll be able to follow it. Now, all of this information will be housed in a portal. In addition to getting the emails of the reports each day, you have an online portal and you have the past 30 ES reports archived, which I'm gonna show you one in a second for a RSI trend line buy that came up on the chart after I taught the signal the first time. And we have monthly member sessions, okay? The next one um, is moved to next week on Wednesday because my, I'm actually a little better today than I thought I'd sound, but I've been a little under the weather. So um, they're generally uh, the third or second Wednesday of every month, but I moved it to January 17th. It's an hour together where we uh, spend on Q&A, tickers, whatever you guys want to go through. Those are archived and put into your portal. So again, if you can't make a certain month live, you can actually go ahead and uh, do that. Now, on top of all this, you probably also want the indicator. So the RSI Power Zones indicator comes in these uh, formats, all right? It comes in TradeStation, NinjaTrader 7 and 8, Thinkorswim, as well as the other in the, uh, programs you see here. And I have installation instructions or video for several of them as well. All right, so I know it's a lot of information, so I'm gonna recap it for you here. Um, first, I've got a couple of instances of people sharing the value of my research with them, but the one I want you to focus on was Susie at the bottom here saying, my first month using RSI Power Zones was also my best trading month so far, okay? For Rob in Alberta, my RSI indicator has become the standard on all his platforms. So there's benefits to trading the RSI the traditional way, no doubt, but taking it to this next level just opens up a world of opportunities as you saw with the signal I taught you today. So here's a special offer for today's attendees. My course, Top Trading Strategies Using RSI Power Zones, has a value of $497. Skinny and the Mini, 30 days of full access, is valued at $97. The RSI Power Zones Indicator, as a standalone, would be $97. And the live Q&A workshop, for us spending an hour together, would be $97. So you add all this up, and that's a value of $788 but you can sign up for the next run of this course, which starts today, you get your first Skinny email tomorrow for $297. If you're an existing Skinny on the Mini subscriber or a past workshop subscriber, there is a hidden discount and it will just emerge when you purchase, okay? But anybody who's new, this is $297 for all of this and you can sign up at hemoready.com forward slash top. Top trading strategies, so we called it top. All right, you get the course, you get 30 days of my subscription service, full access. You can go watch all the archive member recordings, et cetera. Um, 
our site power zones indicator files to install and the live q a workshop on february 8th so you need this course because i'm going to give you entry exit and stop placements to optimize your use of our site power zones it combines my gan analysis approach with this powerful indicator and it saves you time and money in the long run now i want norman in ontario to speak to you if i haven't already a day after learning and he's talking about this signal, okay? One of HEMA's RSI Power Zone's trend condition, continuation entry signals. I tested it out on a five minute chart of Tesla. With this one trade, I made enough to cover the cost of a newest course. And he's referring to this one. So um, again, I appreciate your time. I think my uh, baton needs to be passed, but I'm gonna leave this information right here just for a moment, okay? You get the Top Trading Strategies course, Skinny and the Mini 30 days access, Power Zones Indicator and Live Q&A Workshop for $2.97. Visit hemaready.com forward slash top.